Welcome to lesson three, in which we will create a simple app based on the game Mad Libs. If you're not familiar with this game, it is one in which you're asked to provide various words like an adjective, a place, a color, and then those words are inserted into other texts where they may or more often don't make sense and often don't make sense in a way that's kind of humorous. This app will introduce the idea of user input, and in particular, we'll be using text boxes as our user input. For this demonstration, we will be using two sentences of text that I took from a seventh grade life science textbook. For the Mad Libs app, we will have a series of labels that will each ask the player to make an entry, a text box where they will type in their entry, at the bottom will be a Mad Libs button that triggers a series of text-to-speech components that will read the excerpt from the textbook with the player's entries, and then a clear button where the player can clear out their entries to start another round playing the game. Let's get started. First, we'll pull over a label, and this label will ask the player to enter a food. We'll call this my food label. I'll change the properties so it's more readable. For this app, I'm going to use 18 font. And then I'm going to change the text to enter a food. Now I want a text box to go with this label. This will be my food text box. In the text box, it automatically offers up a hint. And we don't want to use the hint here because I think it's pretty obvious what the player will need to do. So for the properties of the text box, I'm going to delete the hint so that it will appear empty in the app. Now for my second label, this is going to be enter a drink. pull over a text box. And remove the hint. My next label will be enter a gaseous substance. And my final label will be enter a state of mind. Now we need to add our buttons, but first let's add a label to serve as a spacer. And I will make the height on this label 40 pixels. Of course, get rid of the text. Now, from layout, I'm going to pull over a horizontal arrangement. Then, in that horizontal arrangement, I will place my first button which will be my Mad Libs button. I'll change the text on the button to Mad Libs. Now I will pull over a second button and put it in the arrangement with the first. This will be my Clear button.
change the text to clear. Then finally, I'm going to put a spacer between these two buttons. And let's make the width on this spacer 80 pixels. And of course, delete the text. And finally, we will need eight text to speech components. You'll notice that I am not going to rename these because they are not specifically associated with anything in our program. And as they are, they come numbered. So I will just work with the numbers they have. With that, we're now ready to start programming. This is going to be a little tedious, but bear with me as we pull this together. What we're going to do is to go to our Mad Libs button, get a win.click event handler. Now we'll go to our first text to speech component. We'll get the call speak procedure call. And for the text there, it will be the first text or the first few words from what was in the textbook which will read, all living things take materials from their surroundings, such as. Next, we're going to go to our second text-to-speech. We'll grab a procedure call and plug it in. And instead of a text string, like what we've done in the previous lessons, we will go to our first text box. So we go to the food text box and we scroll down and you see that there is a green block that has the name of our text box and it just has dot text at the end. This block will serve as a pointer. What a pointer does is to direct a program to where define a value that it is going to need. And in this case, it is directing the program to the text box to get the text in that text box because that is the value that our text-to-speech component is going to need. We'll go to our third text-to-speech component, get another call speak. And in this case, we want to get the pointer to our second text box, which is the drink text box. Plug that in. And you notice I've got a series of procedure calls all stacked on top of one another in my win.click event handler. This is referred to as a control flow in that what the program will do is it will go through each one of these one after another in sequence. Now I want to go to my fourth text to speech. Pull over another call.speak. And for this, I want to merely have it say the word and. Pull over a text string, plug in the word and. We'll go to our fifth text to speech. And now we want to go to our gas text box and we want to get the pointer. Next, we're ready for our sixth text box. And there we want to have text. So we'll do a text string. And for that text, we want it to say, they use these materials to get. And 
Now our seventh text box, or in our seventh uh, text-to-speech, is going to point to our state text box. And one more, our eighth text-to-speech. And this is going to finish up the text from the uh, textbook, which is which is needed for their life functions. Now we have one more thing to do, and that is our clear button. So let's go to the clear button, get the win.click event handler for the clear button. What we're going to want to do here is to use this block to clear out each one of our text boxes. So let's go to our first text box, the food text box, and you'll notice that there is a block called set text to. Let's grab that and plug it in. And then we go to our text blocks, grab a text string, which starts out empty, and that's exactly what we want it to be. Now, let's copy this and do three more. First one of these will change to our drink text box. The next one will change to our gas text box. And the last one we will change to our state text box. That completes our program, so give it a try. With this illustration, I have demonstrated how taking material that you need to learn and somehow finding a way to make it humorous is a good strategy to help you later be able to remember that material. Now's an opportunity for you to go and find your own text and create a Mad Libs similar to what we've done here. For more lessons or the written notes to go with this lesson, go to the Brain Hackers Association website at www.brainhackers.net.